you can love it you can hate it but you can't ignore it that's become really true about the world of open ai and chat gpt the reason for that is a big deal between microsoft and open ai and hence programmers like you and me should start learning how to use open ai slash chat gpt in our day to day work now there are two things here for what purposes we will be using these tools and second how we will use these tools in our programs right so we will not be going and writing questions in chat gpt window so it has to happen through a api all of you must be aware chat gpt api is already coming open ai api is already there okay so in this video i am going to show you how you can use open ai api and do some meaningful stuff through python program okay so we will be solving two questions here one how to use api second how to do some useful stuff there is no end to what all useful stuff we can do i am going to show you some of these okay so guys the reason i am creating this video is basically this news where microsoft says a multi billion dollar investment in chat gpt maker open ai okay that means everything around microsoft which includes azure ml studio azure ml and everything on microsoft offering you will see some flavor of open ai and that is where it becomes really important for us to know how to integrate open ai and its components in our programs okay so let's go ahead and open the portal of open ai first this is the portal and then this message is very important chat gpt is coming to our api soon sign up and stay updated all of you know chat gpt has made public crazy all over the world because of its you know way response the way it writes the code and many other things right so if the api comes then many people will want to use the apis from their programs right so if you are writing a c program or java program or python program you will want to use this api that is what i am going to show you in today's video before that how to generate this api key so that is very important part how to generate this api key so once you log in to chat gpt it says create an account sign up to stay updated if you don't have an open ai account go ahead and create this account okay once you create this account free of cost then you will able to see something like here if you see right on the right hand side top you can come and say click here and view api keys okay and here you will have one api key for example this is my api key this api key i can copy this okay i can copy this and use this so this api key you will have your own api key now i am going to show you in python how you can use it but before that uh what are the models in chat gpt that we are going to use okay sorry in open ai as of now we are using open ai um, key, uh, um, key okay so in open ai there are different types of um, gpt models so if you can see our gpt models can understand generate natural language so the model which we are going to use is this one okay text da vinci 003 most capable gpt3 model can do any task other models can do often with higher quality okay so we will see what all tasks it can do and how it can help in your programs now there was a previous version for this 002 what is the difference i have opened here so difference between 02 and 03 so 03 is basically on top of previous model so it's kind of an advanced version of 02 you can say okay now let's go ahead in python and try to see how to use these things so you will need two packages uh open ai package you will need cat boost i am using later so i am installing cat boost also if you don't have uh, install open ai package and whatever uh, ml algorithm you want to use you can use it okay and what i am going to do is i am going to store the data in a variable so i am importing package open ai and then this open ai dot api key is the place where i am going to store my api key if you remember the api key that we extracted from the portal okay that api key we are going to store here so i already have run this one so i am not rerunning it and i am keeping it blank knowingly because i don't want to display my key publicly okay so you can just for example this is your key so you can come here and just write your key okay and this variable you can use however you want fine moving ahead guys you can see here i am writing a statement here open ai dot completion dot create so i am using the completion feature and i am saying create which engine i am using as i told you text da vinci 003 and this is my message okay so my message is what is the sql learn library that is what i want to ask okay and if i run this then it will give me a complete 
let me run this and then I will show you. In that completion, it will give me a structured response. From that structured response, I am just taking out the text part. Okay. So if you see here, I will just say completion and you will see a structured response like this. Okay. In this structured response, I'm just bothered about this part, this part. Okay. So hence I'm saying, give me the zeroth in the list, zeroth element in the dictionary and then the text part. That is what I'm saying here. Zeroth element and then the text part. So once I do that, it gives me scikit-learn is a Python library for machine learning and blah, 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 whatever scikit-learn does. Okay. Now let's go ahead and run something really meaningful so that it becomes easy for you to include that in your program. Okay. So here I'm saying, what are some pandas use cases? Suppose you, suppose you are not aware of how to use pandas. We can ask for TensorFlow. We can ask for PyTorch. We can ask for whatever thing we need. Okay. What are some common pandas use case? And you can see a very, very well, you know, designed, very well explained explanation here. Okay. So pandas data analysis, time series analysis, data cleaning, visualization, modeling, etc. Let's go ahead and see some more interesting stuff. See here, I'm asking, I am trying to build a web application. What backend framework I could use and what are their pros and cons? Now, this is something you will want to use sometimes because um, in Python, there are options to build a machine learning, uh, let's say deep learning uh, model, right? So you may be having, you may want to use a PyTorch or sometimes TensorFlow, sometimes some other thing, Keras. So how do you decide pros and cons based on your data, right? So this kind of response, if somebody gives you, see here. So I can build using Ruby on Rails web application or Node.js or Django or ASP.NET Core. So it tells me what are the pros and cons for all these methods, okay? This is one thing I found very useful because um, on a fly, it does the comparison and tells me the response. Okay. So pretty useful. Let's see some more things. Here I'm saying write example Python code that performs data, data normalization on fake data. I am knowingly giving something more complex to see how it is performing. Okay. And it is giving me complete list of one data, then normalization, then how to normalize the data. So this entire thing I can copy and I can just run it in my program. So I will copy from here and I will just insert a cell and run it. No problem with that. Okay. So that is how you can generate your code itself. You want to generate some more sophisticated code. You can do like this. So here I am generating a, a right example Python code that generates synthetic drug sales data stored in a data frame. So I'm, I'm being very specific here. I'm saying give me synthetic drug sales data and store that in a data frame. That also it gives me. And that is why this model is so smart. Okay. Then I'm saying write example Python code that, that generates synthetic healthcare re readmission data stored in data frame. From this write code that builds cat boost model, that's why I had cat boost in the beginning, that predicts readmission outcome. Also write code to calculate and print performance. So it's a large instructions that is instruction that is being given here. Okay. And if you see here, it does everything from data creation. See here. This is the data creation part. Okay, from here to here, everything from data creation to everything from model building to everything from accuracy generation. Okay, because all those things are given in the instruction. Okay, another important thing I want to show you guys, most of the people are confused where to get some good data sets. I'm just saying list some good public data sets. It gives me and it gives me link as well. Okay. After that, I'm asking list some good set data set with some, some license. I'm saying Apache 2.0 license. Okay. That also it gives me with Apache 2.0 license. Suppose you want some, some filter or some specific type of license, etc. that, that it can give you. Okay. And here last but not the list, what are some good interview questions related to transformer models? So it gives me 10 interview questions related to transformer models. Okay. So you can search topic by topic and you can get the answer of these questions also. So if you spend like two hours on this, you can maybe go through, let's say hundred of interview questions on one shot, right? No need to search on different portals, et cetera. So I just tried to show you how to get some data sources, how to get some interview questions, how to do some basic model building, how to prepare some basic data, some basic functionalities like normalization, et cetera, and how to take the decision, which model to use, which model not to use how to see which package does what. So these are some of the things we can do directly in Python. No need to go to 
tomorrow when ChatGPT API comes, right? No need to go to portal and type the question. We can do in Python. We can take the code, take it and run it, okay? So you and me should be aware of how to use the API from OpenAPI and ChatGPT because tomorrow there is a big possibility you and me may be using it in our program, okay? So I hope you like the video, guys. Please give me a thumbs up if so. Subscribe to the channel if you have not done yet. See you all in the next video. Wherever you are, stay safe and take care.